dog training. My name is Jackie and I work at the Dartmouth SPCA working with the dogs and um, today we're going to talk about yellow dogs. What is a yellow dog? A yellow dog is a dog that has some special requirements when you're handling a dog. So dogs that like to jump or are especially mouthy or grabby, um, dogs that pull hard on the leash, that type of thing. So we're going to discuss how to handle those behaviors and um, the, the most important thing when you start to work with the dogs is to observe their body language. So body language is always, always at the forefront. Um, the best way to get that experience is by observing the dogs while you're here at the shelter and also by going online and looking at a lot of the dog body language videos. They will help you in trying to assess what it is the dogs are trying to tell you and why they are doing the behaviors they're doing. So such things as a, a stiff tail or a tail that's out to the side or it's a it's slight wag um, or a fast wag, uh, those can indicate different things. If, if the body of the dog is loose and wiggly and the tail is wagging from side to side and their tongue is hanging out, that's a pretty easy going dog and that would probably be a green dog. But a dog that is a little more nervous might be kind of stiff and their tail might be rigid and their ears might go back and that's a dog you want to be cautious with and take your time with. Um, another sign of a nervous dog is a dog that may lift its paw or it may lip, lip lick or it may turn its head away from you and back into a corner and try to make itself small and just generally try to avoid you. Those dogs you're going to want to handle differently. You don't want to be approaching a very shy or nervous dog in their kennel. Always try to get the dog to come to you when it's in the kennel. And as a general rule, we don't go into the kennel with the dogs. It is their space, so you want to respect that. Um, also, if it is a dog aggressive dog, you're going to want to be careful handling that dog and make sure you're not in the kennel. Because if it reacts to another dog while you're in there, then you've put yourself at risk. So we always want to take the dog out of the kennel first before you have to do anything in the kennel, such as remove bedding or set up the kennel in some way or clean it, or if they have a, a torn up toy. So always remove the dog, don't go in there with the dog. That's just a, a health and safety thing, <laughs> and we want to keep everybody safe. So another thing you want to do with a shy dog or a fearful dog that's in the kennel is approach it from the side, make yourself small, even shrink down if you need to, and just kind of entice the dog to come to the front of the kennel. If it doesn't, that's fine, and you can just offer it some treats and just walk away. And just let it get familiar with your scent and, and the way you move through the building, and try it again over and over. And you can just kind of hang out at the front of the kennel until the dog is a little more, feeling a little more secure, and it should come forward eventually. Um, if that doesn't happen, you don't, you don't want to force the dog out, so just give it some more time, and sometimes that can take a day or two even. Um, and don't worry about that, but dogs do generally come around once they get familiar with all the scents. Um, so on that note, the dogs that come into us come from all different situations. They come from good, good homes, bad homes, all different kinds of, of reasons. And those dogs are going to be understandably nervous and stressed. So always remember, even a well-balanced dog is going to come in here and be overwhelmed because everything they know has been taken away from them. They had a routine going at home, even if it was a bad one. They still knew what to expect. They come here, they're strangers, there's lots of other dogs, there's lots of noise. Um, it's quite overwhelming, so you want to just take your time with those dogs and let them decompress a little bit before you really try to do too much with them. Um, so those are, those are things to keep in mind when you are working with the new dogs, especially a dog you haven't met before, you haven't been around, maybe you, know, you haven't been in for a few days. Just take your time to get to know the dog. The other thing we have are behavior sheets and enrichment sheets for all of the dogs. So what we do is record any behaviors that we like or that we don't like. And enrichment is when you take the dog for a walk or you play with the dog in the yard, you throw a ball for them. And always, if you're doing a game of fetch, you want to exchange the toys. Always have one toy to exchange for the other. You're never going to take that toy physically from the dog. And the reason for that is it could be 
toy aggressive and just or a toy garter and not want to surrender that and you don't want to be physically forcing that because you could get bitten so always exchange or offer them a treat or throw the treat away and usually they'll drop the toy to go and get the treat or the other toy so that's just another safety thing and we want to again keep everyone safe Okay, so when you first start working with a dog, what you want to do is get their attention. And uh, I always have a lot of treats on me, a lot of different variety of treats. You want some high value treats, and they don't need to be very large. A dog will do a whole lot for a tiny little piece of food. And the first thing you want to do is get their attention. Good. And what we want to do is mark any behavior that we like with a good or a yes. And if you're skilled with using a clicker, you can certainly do that, use your clicker. Uh, but a good or a yes is also a good way to mark the behavior that you want. So you want to ignore anything that you don't like and reward what you do like. So if he was jumping on me right now, what I would do is turn away. I would just completely ignore him. I would look at him. I wouldn't, wouldn't speak to him. I wouldn't touch him. And that is a clear signal to him that I'm not interested and he will generally learn to walk away and, and ignore me so it does take practice and it does take a little bit of time for the dog to get used to that and if you're consistent the behavior will extinguish itself very quickly and that's why it's important that everyone working in the shelter does does everything the same way to get the results that we want so here I am and because dogs don't speak English, you can't just automatically go sit, sit, sit to a dog because he's not going to understand what you're saying. Just like if I told you in a foreign language to go and do something, you'd still be looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. And you wouldn't do it. So what I want to do is shape that behavior first, and then I'm going to label it with whatever name I want. Good. And I'm going to just mark that every time he does it correctly and get him to do it a few times. So he understands what it is he's supposed to do. Yes. Good job. Yes. So I'm just luring him into the sit at this point. Good. Sit. Yes. Good job. So once he's got that down and you've labeled it and he understands it, good. He happens to already know this. <laughs> Then you can try a different thing, and you, what you're going to do is lure them into a down. Good job. And same thing. Always better to start from a sit to go into a down. It's easier. Good. And the same thing. Once he's doing that consistently, then you can just go sit, down. Good job. Awesome. And then with some dogs, it takes some time, so he's already kind of knows a lot of this stuff, it makes it a lot easier. Then you can train in other tricks or whatever it is you like to do with the dog. Um, stay is a good one to learn for sure, for safety reasons. Another one that we teach is the leave it. Especially for a dog that's very pushy and likes to jump on people, it, it's a form of impulse control. So you show them the treat, you close your hand, you don't let them have it. Okay. And then you wait a certain amount of time and then release the, let him go and have the treat. And then you can increase that time. And that, that teaches the dog some impulse control. Okay, good job. And now I'm going to attach the word leave it to it. Leave it. Okay, good job, good boy. Now these things also take time and he already knows some of these behaviors already, so that he's made my job a little easier today. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. And another one is stay. So what you start with is you just can lean back, go back to the dog, increase the time that you're doing this. And the, the big benefit of doing these behaviors, training in these behaviors, is that you'll notice that the dog stops doing all the other behaviors that it was doing before, the mouthing and the, maybe the bolting out of the kennel even. 
um, and they stop jumping because they've got something else to focus on. It's also mentally stimulating for them and physically exhausting as well. And that's very important. The more we can get them out of the kennels, the better it is for their mental state and it keeps them in good condition as well. And then they're less stressed, so they're more able to hang out in their kennel and not be as stressed, which is awesome. Good boy. So with loose leash walking, if a dog is pulling you in, the, in a direction that you don't want to go, well, you basically what you want to do is just stop. As soon as there's tension on the leash, stop. And then you can, what you can do as soon as the dog looks at you is reward them for looking at you and carry on. If the dog starts to pull forward again, you're going to stop, wait till the dog looks at you, reward him, and carry on. And every time there's tension on the leash, what you want to do is just change direction or just come to a standstill. And the dog is going to wonder why he's not going anywhere. And eventually he's going to understand that he's going to wait for you to move before he gets to move. So that's how you deal with loose leash walking. It does take a lot of practice and continued, you know, you need to work at it basically every day and everybody needs to work on it, if, especially if you have a dog that's a big puller. And what that does, with, it will make the dog easier for everyone to handle, volunteers, staff, and most importantly, the public. The more we can train these dogs, the better their chances are of staying in a home, too. And they're going to be more appealing when people come in to walk them. So we want to do what we can to get these guys adopted. So sometimes you'll have a dog that is quite um, excited to get out of the kennel and they will try to bolt. So what you want to do is interrupt that and anticipate that it's going to happen. So what I do is I'll open up the kennel door very briefly. As soon as I see that that dog is about to jump up on the, the kennel door, I'll just close the door again. Just interrupting him enough where he has to again put his feet down and rethink what he's doing. And then I'll try to open the kennel again, and if he does it again, I'll just close the door again. Just very quickly, just enough to, so the dog's like, oh, you know. And eventually they'll think, oh, that's not working. So then they'll just learn to stand there. And that makes it a lot easier when you're trying to clip that, that leash on. Because you don't want them flying out the door, you don't want the dog getting loose, and you certainly don't want it interacting with the other dogs in the kennel area that could be potentially dangerous as well. So we try to avoid all these things whenever possible. So just as soon as they make that move, just close the kennel door until they have all four feet on the floor and then try it again. And eventually that should resolve itself. Sometimes you'll encounter a dog that doesn't like to go back in its kennel. Um, so what we want to do there is encourage them you know, have a nice, light, happy voice, go in the direction you want to go to get to the kennel. If they put the brakes on, what you can do is lure them with treats, and hopefully they'll follow along, and you can just make a trail of treats, and basically do that, so the dog follows it, and the next thing you know, the dog is in the kennel, and then you can just close the door. Or you just keep hand feeding them as well to get them in. You don't want to be forcing the dog into the kennel. If you do that, the next time you try to put the dog in the kennel, it's going to be that much worse. And then it'll get worse and worse. And you could put yourself at risk of being bitten by doing that. So we always want to make it the dog's idea. If the dog is really toy motivated, you can toss a toy into the kennel. Or just carry the toy with you as you're going through the building. Um, and that often will work or a very high value treat or some really good wet food that they really enjoy. So that's one way to get around that issue. And you want to make it a happy event every time they go in the kennel, even if they're not a dog that puts the brakes on, you always want to make it um, a rewarding experience versus a punishment so that the dog doesn't view it as a punishment. So just toss some treats in there every time you return a dog to their kennel. That way you'll never have that issue to start with. Um, a lot of dogs have been potentially incorrectly crate trained in their former life, so that could be why they have an aversion to going into a smaller space. 
So just work on that and just try to lead them in with the treats and hopefully you'll have success with that. someone else handle the dog and don't ever feel like you have to handle a certain dog especially if you're not comfortable because again we do want everyone to stay safe and they will pick up on your nervousness um, so that's why it's important that you fill out the behavior sheets that we have available for every dog as well as the enrichment sheets that way we can track what behaviors have been noticed because we may not see everything and so whatever you see that is either good or bad, we want you to document that for every animal. And check on, if you're going to handle a yellow dog, you have to check those sheets on a daily basis. So if you've never met that dog or interacted with it, it's important to review those notes before you actually take the dog out of the kennel. And also record the enrichment, um, just so we can see what the dog has been learning or what types of things the dog needs to work on. So those behavior sheets will have uh, information on there to let you know what problems we have noticed with the dog. So if you can just keep recording whatever you see, good or bad, that's a, that's a big help and we can build on that to help make the dog more adoptable. <laughs> 